that you were aware of and knew of, but didn't have relationships with, three Alberts, Julie, Chris, and Colin. Not quite true, is it? Objection. Sustained. There's a fourth Albert out there, isn't there? Kevin. Right? Yes. But you didn't tell us about that one. Objection. I'll allow it. Correct? I don't consider that a relationship. It's uh Well, let's look at that. <clears throat> Trooper Proctor, I'm not asking you to look for anything in the in the binder at this point. I'm asking for your memory. I don't recall that. You don't recall the date or you don't recall July 19th, 2022. You don't recall the drinking. The date itself, sir. I can't speak to any level of intoxication, but uh I don't recall any of us either of us being um intoxicated. Got it. Where's the log of those items being booked into evidence? There was a chain of custody from when they entered the, uh, the DA's office, and then uh, when Trooper DeChico um, created a, a label for him, but also put him in the secure facility. Can you show me where that is? Can, can I'm not the evidence office. I don't have that. I see. So you didn't bring a log with you of any sort, of any sort concerning the chain of custody of these items, correct? No. Where's that physical log, sir? I'm not the I'm not an evidence officer, so I don't know how that. Yeah, so I don't know how that's generated. The fact of the matter is, the evidence log attendant to this case regarding those clothing items starts on March 14th when they were taken to the crime lab. Correct. That's when the clothing was transported to the lab, and that's the only log we have of what happened to those clothes between January 29th and today. Jackson. Oh. Do you know that? I don't. I'm not off the top of my head, ma'am. They were typos, sir. Fact of the matter is, you delivered that car to Canton PD to the Sallyport garage before a single piece of taillight material was ever found in this case, Trooper Proctor. Is that correct? Correct. It arrives at 531. It's a supervisor's decision. I don't know who it came from. Was it Lieutenant Tully? Again, I don't know who we came from. So you were just following orders? Yes. Got it. Were you answering a question about video inside the garage? No, I was answering the question about what video I observed, and it was exterior video that I observed. Although the answer to the question was cameras in the garage or Sally Port. That if was I, the question. If I was aware of any. And your answer was yes. And then the next question is, have you reviewed the footage? And your answer was, I saw one very grainy video. And then another, Sergeant Buchanan and I arriving in the main entrance around 530 following the vehicle. Right? That and was those, your testimony. Yeah, those two videos I'm referring to in the exterior of the building. Question, when did you watch the video from the Sally Port? Answer, I haven't reviewed it, sir, in quite some time. So I can't recall what's on there. It's from the uh, driveway camera. But you withheld that video out of 360 odd videos that you turned over, you withheld that one and never mentioned it until February of 2024, correct? Objection. Is that true? That's, I'm not aware of that, withholding that. I beg your pardon? Yeah, the timestamp on the, uh, on the bottom of it was a kind of it was backwards. That video? Uh, just the other day. Did you delete a video of Miss Reed arriving to One Meadows at approximately 12.41 a.m. on January 29th, 2022? Absolutely not. You will agree, Trooper Proctor, that the video of Miss Reed returning home from 34 Fairview at approximately 12.41 a.m. is not there. Correct. As the case officer, uh, you're aware that Trooper Proct I'm sorry, Trooper DeChico also reviewed some or all of those videos, correct? Yes. And he did that at your request? Correct. Um, he took notes of his review of those videos, correct? Yes. And then he provided those notes to you so that you could then memorialize those notes and your notes in a broader report that you then drafted 
in November of 2022, correct? The from <clears throat> memory serves me like the report I wrote regarding the ring camera was based off my observations uh, of the videos that I had watched. But you certainly did have, as you just indicated, you did accumulate his notes and review his notes as well as your own notes, correct? I, that's the, my recollection. I wrote that report off of my notes. Did you actually, at any point before writing your, your report, did you note or did you review his notes? I can't recall. You asked him, he, he reviewed the videos at your directions, correct? At yes. At your direction, correct? Yes. And obviously he would have wanted to provide you whatever insights he had into his review of those videos. Otherwise, what's the point, right? Correct. So when you reviewed his notes, did you see that they were on some sticky pads? Do you remember that? That sounds about right. Do you recall exactly, as you sit here, exactly what was on one or more of those sticky pads that you reviewed from Trooper DeChico? I don't know. Would it refresh your recollection if you were to look, take a look at a copy of those notes? Yes. Trooper Proctor, would you agree that from the very beginning of your investigation, you treated Karen Reed very differently than you treated the Alberts and the McCabe's in this case? Objection. I'll allow it. Was she treated differently? Absolutely not. We've, Like I said before, we followed the facts and the evidence, the open mind. Did you consider her to be, for want of a better phrase, an outsider? No, not at all. Not somebody from Canton? No, not at all. Not family, not friends with the Alberts? Absolutely not. Who's she? The defendant. Miss Reed? Correct. You literally said that you hope that Karen Reed, the subject of your investigation, the woman sitting to my left, about seven feet from me, that she would just die. Correct? The figure of speech. You wanted her to, the figure of speech is you wanted her to kill herself. No. Right? No, it's not. Trooper Proctor, Karen Reed, in your investigation, had quickly become a very serious problem for you. Had no, absolutely not. In your words, quote, all the powers that be want answers ASAP. That's what you texted on January 29th, right? Yes. That put a lot of pressure on you, didn't it, Trooper Proctor? There's a lot of pressure in every case, sir. Yes. Kevin Albert, loosely? Yes. Loose enough to leave his badge and his gun in your cruiser when after a night of drinking, right? Objection. Sustained. You agreed in your group chat that you needed to, quote, make this cut and dry because another cop was involved. Those are your words, right? Objection. Where is this? This was referred to in earlier text messages, group chats. So is that, so is that right? Did you say that, sir? I did text that. I don't know if it's in the exact context, um, but yes, those were my words. Group chat. Yes, that was in the group chat. Your friends wrote this whole thing, in their words, stinks, correct? Yes, I interpret that as a joke. You believed, Trooper Proctor, that your life would be much easier if Karen Reed was just dead, didn't you? Objection. I'll allow it. No, no, no. Like I had said, it was a figure of speech. Um, my emotions got the best of me based on, you know, the fact that Miss Reed hit Mr. O'Keefe with his, her vehicle and left him to die on the side of the road. So my emotions got the best of me with that figure of speech. Well, let's talk about your figures of speech. During the course of your investigation, your figures of speech include the following. Would you agree, Trooper Proctor, that you have dehumanized Karen Reed during the course of your investigation with comments and words like this? Jackson. I'll give you this one, Mr. Jackson. Would you agree with that? I would say based off that language, um, Yes. And you admitted in your own words that the cop homeowner wasn't going to, quote, catch any shit. Right? Correct. Because you were out to, to quote, make this cut and dry. Isn't that right? The homeowner wasn't going to catch any shit 
because Mr. Elba had nothing to do with Mr. O'Keefe's death. Because you were going to make sure that the case was cut and dry. Those were your words, right? On January 29th at 2.22 a.m., there was a call between him and Brian Albert that morning? I was not aware of that. Might have been important to your investigation, don't you think? Objection. I'll allow it. Depends what that. I don't know what the call was about. Oh, sorry, finish that. Depends. I don't know what the call was about. I don't know if they actually connected and communicated what the length of the call was. So right, and you never asked, did you? I was unaware that call took place. And you unaware unaware that that call took place because you didn't get his phone, Trooper Proctor, right? Typically, we don't get witnesses' phones, sir. You were unaware of that call at that time because you didn't see his phone. Correct? Objection. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. How many murder cases in the history of your career have you worked on in which the medical ex examiner uh, made the determination that the manner of death could not be determined? Objection. I'm going to allow that. <laughs> I wouldn't put, feel comfortable putting a number on it. Uh, it's not a lot. I couldn't but, put, I couldn't ballpark it for you, but I know it's not a lot. Well, Trooper Proctor, you were asked this exact question in February of 2024 at the, at another proceeding. Mm -hmm. And you indicated that you had never seen it in your entire career, correct? Trying to, yeah, I'm trying to run. Well, you were asked the question. So first, what do you mean by, of course, it's undetermined? And your answer was, I said it at the time. It was kind of like, not like figuratively, of course, it's an, of course, like I had never really seen that before in a homicide, end quote. Correct? Yes. As the case agent, as the case officer, do you believe it might be important to find out whether or not that phone appeared to have been manipulated or altered in some way before it was turned over? Wouldn't that be something that you would normally do? That'd be important. But you didn't do it with Jim McCabe's phone? I didn't personally handle that, no. Did you ever seize Nicole Albert's phone? No. Did you ever seize Brian Albert's phone? No. Nope. Colin Albert's? No. Nope. Chris Alberts? No. Julie Alberts? No. Nope. Were you concerned that if you seized any or all of their phones, especially Colin? Yet when you wanted to coordinate witnesses for interviews in this case, who'd you turn to? I texted uh, Kevin Albert to see if he could secure a conference room for uh, us to conduct interviews at the station. The same Kevin Albert to help coordinate these witness interviews, who's the brother of Brian Albert, right? Yes. I don't make any charge on decisions. We're essentially fact finders. So as far as what Ms. Reed was charged with or when she was charged with it, that's not something that's within your purview, correct? No, not at all. Your friends wrote this whole thing in their words, stinks, correct? Yes, I interpret that as a joke. You believed, Trooper Proctor, that your life would be much easier if Karen Reed was just dead, didn't you? Objection. I'll allow it. No, no, no. Like I had said it was a figure of speech. Um, my emotions got the best of me based on, you know, the fact that Miss Reed hit Mr. O'Keefe with his, her vehicle and left him to die on the side of the road. So my emotions got the best of me with that figure of speech. Well, let's talk about your figures of speech. During the course of your investigation, your figures of speech include the following. She's a bitch. Objection. Is that right? Yes. A whack job, correct? Yes. A retard, right? Yes. Her balloon knot leaks, right? Yes. No ass, correct? Yes. She's fucked, according to you, right? Yes. Ass leaker. That was the word you used, a figure of speech, right? Correct. A girl who shits herself, right? Correct. 
and then fuck her, correct? Correct. Would you agree, Trooper Proctor, that you have dehumanized Karen Reed during the course of your investigation with comments and words like this? Jackson. I'll give you this one, Mr. Jackson. Would you agree with that? I would say based off that language, um, <laughs> yes. And you admitted in your own words that the cop homeowner wasn't going to quote, catch any shit, right? Correct. Because you were out to, mo to quote, make this cut and dry. Isn't that right? The homeowner wasn't gonna catch any shit because Mr. Elba had nothing to do with Mr. O'Keefe's death. Because you were gonna make sure that the case was cut and dry. Those were your words, right? Jackson. Sustained. And Trooper Proctor, it would be far easier, far easier for you to pin it on the girl just kills herself, right? Objection. Sustained. Shame on you, sir. Trooper Proctor, uh, let me try that again. As far as um, you were asked about text messages that occurred in August of 2022 in which you um, indicated that you did not like Mr. Yannette, correct? Correct. And so at the time of that text message, it was sent in August of 2022. Why, why was that? Not in August of 2022, why was that? Yes. The reasons I laid out the false accusations of being conflicted and corrupt spouted in an open court, which the zero evidence of, like I said, I stand by the integrity of this investigation as well as every trooper and supervisor in my office. Uh, were there also motions filed uh, by Mr. Unetti or by counsel uh, containing photographs of yourself and, and some children? Yes. And what, if anything, were the allegations in regard to uh, the children that were depicted in those photographs? Uh, so the photograph was taken in my parents' backyard. Objections over the my parents back yeah, at a pool party. Um, there's some little kids in the, in the photo. Defense counsel kept insinuating that those were the McCabe's children, when in fact they were my family, my cousins. Uh, have you at any point in time ever met any children of the McCabe's? No, sir. In the course of this investigation, as it was uh, sort of alleged on cross-examination, did you essentially pick a suspect and then try to have the evidence uh, fit that? Objection. The form? Meaning? In that form, it's stricken. Not allowed to ask it that way, Mr. Good morning. What did you do? I reached out to Ring several different times. Um, they informed me if a video is deleted, there's no digital footprint of that. It's essentially kind of gone forever. And with respect uh, to that time frame, what, if any other additional steps did you take to try to retrieve that video? Was there a second search warrant, sir? Yes. You were looking for additional information from that same ring video, correct? Yes, you sustained. What, if anything, were you looking for in that second search? Yeah, uh, additional video. Uh, you were asked some questions about notes uh, from Trooper DeChico, correct? Correct. As far as that 0041 note, do you know what that means? That just tells me it's a time. And do you know specifically whether or not that is something that Trooper DiCicco saw or something that Trooper DiCicco was looking for? That's something Trooper DiCicco could answer for. So you were asked some questions about uh, Sally Port video at Cannes Police Station, correct? Yes. When you arrived at the Sally Port garage of the Cannon Police Station uh, sometime around or shortly after 5.30 p.m., correct? Yes. Now, that 5.30 p.m. time, is that before or after uh, 5.07 a.m.? After. And 5.07 a.m. is when uh, the Exhibit 6, um, video number, I believe, 153, with the defendant back being out of the garage where you uh, testified on Monday, you observed some damage to the taillight, correct? Correct. And 
you're aware of some other ring video from Mr. O'Keefe's house uh, showing the defendant, uh, Ms. Roberts and Ms. McCabe, arriving at his house in which you can see damage to the right passenger tail light, correct? Correct. Are you aware of a cruiser camera video from the Cannon Police Station, uh, Police Department, specifically uh, Lieutenant Ray, uh, going to One Meadows Ave at 8.22 in the morning on the 29th, in which you can also observe damage to the tail light? Objection. Sustained is to the form. As far as 8.22 in the morning, uh, what, if any, video uh, from One Meadows Avenue are you aware of uh, depicting the defendant's tail? Uh, <clears throat> Can Police Department went to conduct a well-being check in on the dash cruiser camera. You can see Ms. the back of Miss Reed's vehicle and the right tail light to be uh, broken and missing pieces. And as far as your time at the uh, home indictment, the vehicle, the defendant's vehicle was towed from that location on that day, correct? Correct. And what, if any, video are you aware of from that uh, driveway, uh, which depicts uh, the right rear passenger side tail light of the defendant's vehicle? Yeah, as the vehicle's being put on the tow truck, you can make out that there's some uh, pieces missing. Later part of the evening, on January 29th, 2022. Um, what is it uh, that you did know in relation to your investigation? Uh, with regard to Ms. Reed, the defendant, and or anyone else. All right. Um, so we knew the last person seen with Mr. O'Keefe alive was Ms. Reed. Uh, we knew they were traveling to Fairview Road. Witnesses stated they saw a SUV out front, out front of the house. We went from one side to the other. Miss McCabe was texting John, parked behind me, things of that nature. John never went into the house. Um, and then the following morning, um, Miss Freed, Miss Roberts, and Miss McCabe located Mr. O'Keefe in the front lawn. I observed those injuries at the hospital. Uh, the one sneaker. Uh, Later on in the day, the CERT team, along with Detective Lieutenant Tully, found broken taillight pieces uh, that matched Miss Reed's taillight, as well as the missing sneaker that matched uh, Mr. O'Keefe's uh, vehicle. Some uh, inconsistent statements that Miss Reed had uh, provided to Sergeant Mechanic and I. Um, yeah. So at the time that you made those comments, disparaging comments in regard to Ms. Reed in the context of those communications with your friends. As inexcusable, as unprofessional as those comments are, the information you had was that Ms. Reed had struck Mr. O'Keefe with her vehicle. Yeah, you've got to watch the form, Mr. Allen, it's sustained. The time that you made those inexcusable and unprofessional comments, what did you believe the defendant had done to Mr. O'Keefe? I believe, based on all the physical evidence and facts, Mr. O'Keefe got out of that vehicle holding that cocktail glass he walked out of the waterfall bar with. Ms. Reed pulled the head and then backed into him, struck him with, the, with her vehicle, and then left. And then came back five and a half hours later, correct? Correct. Shame on you, sir. Shame on you, sir. Shame on you, sir.